Daltonator multi-tool, a multi-configuration foam dart blaster. It takes half length darts and you can build it in many different ways. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to build the pro version of the multi-tool. Linked in the description will be plenty of documentation to allow you to build the standard version of the multi-tool full hardware list, a link to my Etsy store where you can buy the 3D files. Uh, the T2 version of the files is the one that I'll be using for this build. I'm going to run through it step by step and just let you know each of the hardware I'm using. So D021 uh, grip top is the first thing we start with and D026 trigger is what we will install first. So you just pl uh, put the trigger through uh, from the top side and then you can be using an M3 by 20 millimeter screw as the rotational axis for uh, the the trigger mechanism the next thing to install is the uh, d027 hd sear it's very important to use a hd version it has a bit more preload on the spring and it holds the uh, more powerful uh, springs much much nicer i use a little bit of silicon grease on the tip of the trigger where that interacts with the sear and it just makes for a much smoother trigger operation uh, because of the extra preload on this HD sear, it can be a little tricky to get this aligned because there's a bit of preload on here. But you want to be aligning the hole in the sear with the hole in the uh, trigger grip top. Um, and then you want to put through the M3 by 20 millimeter screw. Uh, you will need a bit of preload. Line up the holes by eye, uh, applying a bit of preload, and then you'll be able to insert the screw through the aligned holes, and then you'll all be good. Once that's together, just give the trigger a bit of a pull, check for free and smooth and full return on the trigger action, uh, and you'll feel a good amount of resistance from the trigger. D022 is the grip, and you're gonna be also be using D023 and D024 grip inserts. Uh, these are optional, and these are uh, assembled with M3 by eight millimeter countersink screws. Uh, this part of the build actually is completely optional. Uh, it's more of a cosmetic piece or an ergonomic piece. Um, the fitment on these can be a little tight, um, but it's designed with enough clearance and they just pop in. To be honest, uh, in this build, it would have been fine without the screws. They almost are a friction fit and stay really securely in the blaster, uh, but just pop in a couple of the screws just to keep it in place. Once that is complete, we're going to use the long M4 40mm countersink screws. These two screws go all the way through the grip and they screw right through up into the grip top. On your print files, you may need to clear out the holes a little bit if there's any stringing that's happened. Uh, what I like to do is uh, thread the screws a bit further past uh, the exit so you can just see the screw heads, uh, sorry, the screw threads popping out and then you can align them with the grip top and then uh, screw them in from there. These screws go in quite a long way, so it can take a while to screw them up fully, uh, but it gives a really solid and secure link between the grip lower and the grip top. Next, we'll be using D001 Magwell, D004 Mag Retainer, D003 Mag Catch, and these will be secured by an M3 12 millimeter screw. Uh, so put in the uh, mag catch into the mag well. If for whatever reason your print comes out a little bit big, just sand the edges to make sure it moves freely. And then the retainer, just put it on there. It will trap the um, catch release and then an M3 by 12 millimeter screw to secure all of it together. Then you'll be installing D002 mag release lever with an M3 by 20 millimeter screw as the axle. Insert it in an upward direction so the catch gets behind the mag release mechanism. Make sure the hole aligns uh, as you screw the screw through there and then that should all be good. And then finally, check the operation of the lever. It should return quite nicely. In this particular example, it's a little bit stiff. Off camera, I actually uh, narrowed off the mag catch. 
then we're going to be using some m4 by 20 millimeter countersink screws to uh, attach the magwell to the uh, trigger grip assembly like so there are these are the kind of two um, diagonal screws um these can be quite stiff to screw in. Do not over tighten any of the screws that go into just 3D print plastic. The whole goal with this blaster is to minimize the amount of special hardware that's required. It all works good, but just don't crank the screws because you can run the risk of uh, threading the screws out. Uh, just snug down the screws for all of the screws in this blaster and it'll all be perfect. Next, we're gonna be building the rear part of the blaster. Uh, using the part shown on screen and uh, three m4 by 20 millimeter countersink screws uh, i like to uh, thread these screws through the rear part um, just a little bit to get them uh, so that the thread pokes out the end and then you can align it to connect it to the rear part of the blaster uh, these screws can be quite tight um, again uh, caution when you're installing the screws do not over tighten the screws just keep a look out to make sure that there's no gaps between the two parts you're assembling there's no wobble between the parts uh, and just snug them down nicely and finally uh, uh, install the top piece and then the top screw in the same way you've done before once that's all assembled this will be the housing that surrounds the plunger tube Once you've assembled that, you're all good here. Now it's on to the important bit, the plunger and breech. I'll probably make a follow-up video to go through this in more detail. These files and these sizes are tuned to my own hardware kit. If you're sourcing your own tube, then you may need to change the sizes of some of these ones. If you want a specific size, message me on my Etsy store. I can make you a version that's specific to the hardware that you're using. I'm happy to do that. I'm really happy to help you to get your blaster working perfectly. But these three dimensions and these three sealing items are critical to your blaster performing perfectly. Okay, next up, we're going to be building the plunger. So these uh, parts you'll be printing out uh, and then assembled together with a countersink M4 20 millimeter screw. Um, going through the rear part first, threading through there, threading the uh, catch part. Uh, check of the orientation uh, for this one. So it's the larger part towards um, the rear of the uh, plunger and then finally the, the front part uh, installed like so uh, clamping all of those three parts together do not over tighten it but make sure it's clamped down enough so that it's all it's all aligned uh, square as it can be then you'll be using your plunger tube the exact specifications are in the description in this video and then the d012 tube cap short uh, is used when using the full length tube. We'll install that a little bit later. Now we're gonna have some 35 millimeter outer diameter by 2.5 millimeter thick O-rings. The first O-ring goes on to the rearward slot. That's gonna provide the seal with the tube. And then the second O-ring goes in a kind of catalated pattern, uh, which is actually gonna be the crash or bump stop to stop the plunger from smashing into the, uh, the breech. It just gives a bit of a rubber cushion there. It uh, can be a little bit tricky to install, but installed like so, uh, just massage the rubber into a way so that it can uh, just form that uh, that nice shape there and it will hold on quite nicely. And then we're going to get some uh, silicon grease as we used before uh, to make sure the O-ring, the rear O-ring specifically, that's the O-ring that will be creating the seal in the plunger tube. Uh, make sure it's a nice amount of silicon applied there and apply silicon to the inside of the plunger tube as well. I'll put a couple of uh, blobs in and then just, just smear it all around with my fingers. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to get it into the, get the O-rings seated into the plunger tube. You want your seal to be tight, uh, but you don't want it to be uh, too draggy. Um, so yeah, I just push it in, massage it around with my fingers, try and look for any parts that won't go in and encourage them into the tube as well. And once it goes in, uh, you should look for a bead of kind of uh, grease around the tube to see that it's sealed, but it should also still be free and fast to move. I'm going to do a breakout video on uh, plunger tubes and seals. I'm pretty sure about that one. We're going to set that part of the blaster aside for a little bit. We'll be using that a little bit later to finish it off. Uh, but for now, we're going to go to the Magwell D005 Magwell top, D007 guide cover, D008 bearing, uh, and then some screws. I think M3 by 12 millimeter screws. Uh, threading through the covers 
Um, this part of the blaster is designed to allow the pump rails to run smoothly. Uh, in this example, I'm using 3D printed uh, bearings, um, I say bearings, inverted commas, bearings. It is possible to use uh, metric bearings in this part of your blaster if you want a super smooth plunger operation. Um, they will just run on the bearings, the bearings will roll. Um, but actually, with these 3D printed placeholder bearings, it, it runs just perfectly fine. Again, following the principle of the multi-tool, it's your blaster to build however you want it to be, and, it, and it's got that scope there to allow you to, to value add your blaster. Uh, repeat for the other side, and then you'll be good to go with the top bit. Then we're gonna be doing the breech. Again, as we said before, important part of the blaster, and I'm just gonna show you how to install the O-ring. So the front O-ring uh, we're gonna install, it can be quite tricky. Uh, so I used a bit of a, I used a, a hex driver to allow me to get the O-ring into the slot properly. The O-ring you use, the size of the uh, breech that you use, and then the barrel that it's going to be sealing into can have so many different small tolerances and variances. And it's down to you to tune this to be a really good seal. Uh, so it, it seals air well, but it's not too difficult. Uh, and then you're going to apply the same O-ring you applied uh, to the plunger tube to the rear part of the breech, and that's going to provide the seal. The version of the Magwell insert I'm going to use is version D. This allows the 60mm barrel to go all the way through the seal and up against the Magwell so that your breech seals against the inside of the barrel rather than in a standard multi tool where it seals against the 3D printed part. There's a bit more tolerance in that, but this way uh, you've got the scope to get a really good seal. An M3 by 12 millimeter screw is used in the front part uh, to secure that insert in place. Again, if you have any special requests for a specific insert, then let me know through my Etsy store. Make, um, make sure you like my Etsy store. Make sure you favorite the blaster files. Uh, send me a message on Etsy if you need any help with this blaster. Next up, we've got the pump rails. These pump rails are exactly from my hardware kit. That's available on my Etsy store, but the specification of these is also available in the description below and also in the uh, online instruction manual for the multi-tool. Um, there's a couple of holes here. Some of them aren't used. The ex exact hole placement, I tried to make it as close as possible to the talon claw. Um, so in this one here, the pump block, make sure you get the orientation correct. You want the teeth to be almost soaring forwards. Uh, and you're installing an M4 by 10 millimeter screw through the middle hole in this uh, pump block. So the, uh, the ho extra hole is facing towards the rear. We're not actually gonna use this for assembly. Uh, do the same on the other side, the other pump rail. Uh, make sure you get the orientation correct here. Then we're going to feed the pump rails through the slots on the magwell, through the bearings and all the way out the back of the magwell. This would allow it to connect to the breech once we... Uh, complete this method here so yeah ju just check that, uh, that everything moves uh, smoothly uh, through there and then we're going to install the breech to the uh, pump rails uh, checking so that the screw feature is facing upwards the slots in the breech should align nicely with the pump rails and then we'll be using uh, four m3 by eight millimeter countersink screws Now these screws fit nice and securely, but they probably are the most delicate screws in the whole of the blaster assembly. So make sure you screw them to nip them up. They don't need to be cranked down. Uh, don't over tighten them because that will potentially strip the threads in the 3D printed breech. What I like to do after I've installed all of the screws, I go around each of them again and just nip them all up just to make sure they've got just, amount, just the right amount of pressure uh, to hold them in place. Then we just check for a smooth operation of the mechanism. Uh, there shouldn't be any binding or dragging in this, um, and then we should all be good to go. Because it's quite difficult to get the O-ring into the plunger tube, I like to put the tube cap over the top of the breech and into the magwell to allow me to get a much cleaner uh, insertion of the O-rings when we get the O-rings into the plunger tube. Now, it is easier to remove the plunger tube and plunger assembly from the rear half of the blaster. 
um, and then we're going to apply grease again silicon grease uh, all the way around the uh, the breech seal um, and also on the inside of the plunger tube uh, same process as before uh, just get a, a good coating of silicon grease all the way around to get that good seal um, and then the, the seal on the breech by design is slightly tighter than the plunger tube the plunger tube you need to be moving uh, sorry the plunger the plunger you need to move quickly and responsively to the spring uh, but the seal on the breech the only way you're actuating that is to actually uh, prime the weapon so um, having that as a slightly tighter uh, by dimension uh, is not a problem at all uh, check it's all um, smooth and free to move and then we're just going to slip the uh, plunger tube cap over the top of the plunger tube as it should be there so we're all good now uh, take a bit of a moment just to clean off your hands because they'll be full of grease uh, and then we're good to go to the next step so we're going to install the plunger tube into the rear part of the blaster uh, just make sure it aligns with um, all of the details at the back there and then we're going to slide the magwell uh, for rearwards towards the blaster and then this is going to be the main part of the blaster complete we're going to secure the uh, two halves together with uh, four m4 by 20 millimeter countersink screws uh, the first one i install is the front one here um, that's just going to get everything locked together quite nicely then we're going to go and install the uh, screw that is above the plunger tube um, just make sure that one's aligned as you screw it in and that'll connect quite nicely um, that is the minimum amount of screws if you're using a very lightweight uh, spring in your blaster um, you could do that as a two screw operation to split the blaster in the future but the harder stiffer springs you're using these two uh, holes at the, um, only the two rear holes you need these are the ones that really clamp it to allow it to give it some really good structural stiffness uh, when using a really high power spring um, you can even clamp it with the uh, forward screws if you want to to get a, a six bolt screw operation but uh, I, I find only these rearward screws are needed to secure the uh, the magwell um, for the high power um, high performance springs next we're going to install the barrel this is a 16 millimeter outside diameter 30 millimeter inside diameter barrel 320 millimeters long this is the one from my hardware kits available on my etsy store and it's quite simply just push it into the uh, magwell insert like so uh, push it to make sure it goes all the way back it might be a tight fit again as i said before if you've got any specific requests to tune any of these sizes to your hardware that you're trying to get with this blaster uh, drop me a message in the etsy store next we're going to be adding the long shroud with the m4 by 12 millimeter countersink screws uh, the medium shroud does fit but anything shorter than that does not fit with the pump rail so you could use a medium shroud in this example here i'm using the long shroud in the t2 uh, style variant um, the version of this without the uh, the t number at the end is the solid one this is the one with the triangles similar to the lvoa uh, real life uh, weapon securing all the four screws with just finger tightness there's no need to crank down on these screws these four screws work together uh, to make a super stable structure then you're going to be having the barrel clamp uh, with an m3 nut and an m3 by 20 millimeter screw put the m3 nut into the slot and then screw the m3 by 20 millimeter screw uh, through to allow you to clamp the barrel when it's in the right location oh, almost forgot the screw there let's put the screw uh, through there pre-thread that one in Once you've got it pre-threaded, slide it down the barrel, um, slot it into the uh, available place here at the end of the shroud uh, and make sure it's aligned to the end of the shroud. Don't push it any further than that. Uh, we'll be securing it with two screws from either side. These will be M3 by 12 millimeter screws, uh, one from each side to secure the barrel clamp in position.
once the barrel clamp is in position, you've got this access hole to screw through uh, to reach the, uh, the the clamping screw, which will hold the barrel in place. Uh, this uh, barrel clamp does have provision for an O-ring to be installed as well. Uh, I personally don't use that. I, th I think the grip, whether with an O-ring or without an O-ring, works perfectly fine. Then you can install the shroud extender, or I've got a, an end cap. There's plenty of different options available with uh, three M3 by 12 millimeter screws. Uh, this is kind of getting into the part of the blaster where you can really make it your own. Check out the link in the description below for the uh, the full build and configuration guide. Um, you can choose to have it with a, a solid end cap, a, an extended shroud, a short shroud. If there's any specific requirements you want, then please contact me via my Etsy store and I'm sure I can, I can accommodate you with any design you really want to go with. So they're screwing the, the three screws in a triangular pattern uh, to secure the end of the blaster. Now we're going to build the preloader adjustment. The keen amongst you will have realised there's no spring installed in the blaster yet because we've got a quick change spring mechanism and with preload adjustment. So uh, we're going to use the M3 by 40 millimeter screw through the back part of the adjuster, screw it onto the um, screw thread part of the adjuster, aligning the hex together, and they're going to clamp together nicely. Uh, this is a quite a long screw. Uh, it can take a bit of effort to screw it in. Again, don't over tighten it, but this one is not particularly important. It just clamp it up. It's all good. And then we're going to install the spring into the quick access uh, loading window at the back. Uh, it just goes in like here. Uh, make sure you push the spring all the way in, which pushes the plunger forwards in the blaster and allow yourself to get a nice amount of thread available to start pre-loading or pre-threading uh, the pre-load adjuster before you do that we do need to have the pre-load collar um, this is it works like a lock ring uh, so once you've got your uh, pre-load to the uh, tension you want um, you can use the lock ring to clamp onto the back of the blaster and that sets that distance uh, so screw it all the way uh, to where you want it to be i personally would recommend so that the, the spring is just not baggy uh, use the um, lock ring to then just tighten it up against the back of the blaster and that's going to set your preload. If you ever want to quickly change your spring or your preload, the adjustments are right there for you. Very quick and simple to do. Now we're going to attach the uh, the pump uh, grip. Uh, this is just a standard Picatinny uh, rail down the bottom, but my uh, design files include the uh, pump grip. Uh, it's kind of like a, a an angled foregrip, I guess. Uh, so it's with an M5 uh, by 30 millimeter screw, an M5 nut. Uh, line it up so it goes into the first slot on the Picatinny rail. Uh, screw all the way through and then uh, use the nut to clamp from the other side. Uh, this has been specifically designed to allow the right amount of throw uh, to allow you to fully prime the blaster. Uh, just be cautious when using aftermarket uh, Picatinny front grips to make sure you can pull the blaster uh, all the way to prime and catch this, uh, the plunger um, because it could bump into the magwell. So yeah, just, just clamp this one up. Uh, it's going into a nut so you can clamp it with a reasonable amount of force and you can clamp it just so there's no uh, rattle or wobble uh, between the grip and the Picatinny rail. Now we're going to be adding the stock. This is in two items, D030 stock and D031 stock plate, uh, secured with M4 by 20 millimeter countersink screws to the rear of the blaster. Ch uh, check out the shape of the rear of the blaster and the stock. You'll see how they fit together. And then inst install the two screws, one straight up and then one 45 degrees from the back of the blaster. This gives a good uh, triangulation to the strength. using another or another set of M4 by 20 millimeter countersink screws, uh, secure the back plate uh, to the stock. It is incrementally adjustable with the holes. Look for the hole alignments to get the right uh, shoulder to grip length that you want for your own uh, size and build.
your blaster is almost complete. We just need to throw on some Picatinny rails, full length Picatinny rails uh, for the top of the blaster, secured with M3 by 12 millimeter screws. This is really down to personal preference. All of the details will be in the online documentation, uh, in the instruction manuals. Um, but yeah, just fill the top with Picatinny rails however you want to. Uh, make sure you do check out the links in the description below. That's going to guide you towards the online uh, instruction manual documentations to allow you to really understand exactly what you need to do for your blasters. Make sure you let me know in the comments below if you've got any suggestions, improvements or anything I can help you with and make sure you go over to my Etsy store which will be linked in the description below and like the store, like the blaster, give me the feedback that there's plenty of options and configurations available with this multi-tool and that is the beauty of this blaster. You can really make this blaster exactly how you want to make it yourself. It can be your blaster and I'm here to help you uh, get exactly what you want. If you have enjoyed this video or found it useful in any way, then make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and make sure you check out all the details in the description below.